every Sunday to help you know what we're doing. I give what I call words of wisdom. These are coin phrases that are taken from the scriptures and I try to make them applicable to life. And we here in our church family try to live what we consider a very practical life. I have a broadcast called Practical Living. This morning I'm going to teach on the subject, watch how you answer people. Watch how you answer people. Your answers mean a lot in terms of how you will go in the progress of your life, in terms of how you answer people. Judge Judy, uh, if many of y'all look at her on TV, but she's on the bench, she constantly says to people, watch what you say now. She's some kind of judge, isn't she? <laughs> That's what she said. Watch what you say now. She tells that to the complainant, and she tells that to the defendant as well. Watch what you say. Because she knows that that's going to go in, in your record. And that it will be a part of the decision that she will make in whatever she does in regard to that case. That's what she's saying. Insurance companies say, do not say anything in an accident. I think it's either AAA or one of them. They're really saying that when you have an accident, don't say anything. Because if you say something, the policeman is going to write it down. It's going to have a bearing on your case. So they're saying if you have an accident, just, just shut up. Call the police. And then let it be adjudicated in court. Because you, through your answers, might mess your case up. This chandelier here in the church, um, it failed. And uh, when I just came out here, it was on the floor. So the church man came and he said, how did it fall? I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, did you see it fall? No, I didn't see it fall. Was anybody up there working? No. Do you know of anybody working up there? I said, I don't know anything about it. As a matter of fact, I haven't seen a fly or anything on that. I said, I haven't seen it. I don't know what he was trying to get me to do was to pin me in an advice that I would have said, yeah, Henry Holland was working on it. <laughs> and then they would, they would attribute it to Henry's fault that it failed. But they were looking for me. And with this Negro psychology, a lot of black folk do that to you. They say things to, they uh, are words that are buzzwords to make you talk. And they think that you don't know that psychology. And I told you over and over that two things you should observe about any people, me, you, anyone else. When people ask you questions, you don't have to tell them to go up. When they keep on asking you this, and won't know what this, something's not right. When people flatter you excessively, and I've told on that how it becomes an entree to people to get into your psyche. But we're talking about watch how you answer. What you say in regard to going to get a job has a lot to do as whether or not you will get that job. I am not against Facebook. Don't misunderstand me. You know, Facebook is like apples. Apples are good because they're very edible. But you can take apples and make cider. So it depends on what you want to do with it. Facebook is good. But you're going to hurt yourself by putting too much of your personal life on Facebook. This social media thing is destructive. And this cyber bullying is a part of that. So, so you need to be very, very careful when you get into that. Listen to this. The heart of the righteous studied the answer, but the mouth of the mouth of the fool of the wicked poured out evil. Uh, the heart of the righteous studied the answer, but the mouth of the wicked poured out evil things. In other words, you should think about what you're gonna say before you say it. Why is it the Bible says, be quick to hear, 
so to speak. It doesn't mean you. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. The word quick means alive. You should be very conscious of what you may have asked. Then after the question is asked, the slowness means you think about what they said and then you respond. So it says to be quick to hear but slow to speak. But the heart of the righteous study and answer. You, 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 you'd be somewhat remiss if you were going to see some business person and you don't give some consideration to what he possibly going to ask you. You, you, just, you just wouldn't, you could do it, but it's not wise. If you're riding with people from here in Greensboro, I would think about what I'm going to talk about. I would think about it. Because wise people study to answer. They just don't blurt out. We have a tendency to say, I'm going to say what I feel, you're a fool. No, no, big fool did that. You're just going to say whatever you want to say. And you'll suffer the consequences of what you say. Secondly, my son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him that reproaches me. In other words, when people come to you in the spirit of anger or some kind of frustrated position, think about it. Say, my son, be wise. So they come to you with a reproach about somebody else. And they come to you and say, so-and-so did this to me, or this happened. What do you have to say about it? What is your opinion about it? And so what you do, you just go to just see it. That's a terrible mistake. What you should say, I don't know anything about it. I would prefer that you would not discuss it with me or something like that. But don't respond. My son, be wise. When people reproach you, you go on your job and people start talking immediately about some things on the job they don't like. You don't have a problem, but they are dragging you into it if you are not wise enough to stay out of it. See, a wise person foresees trouble. And what does he do? He hides himself. In other words, a wise person, when they see trouble on hell, they get out of the way. A fool will run into it. That's a fool. Judge your neighbor, he ain't not talking about you. He's just talking at you. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth. By what you say. A man has joy by the answer of his mouth and the word spoken in due season. How good what? In other words, when you can learn to speak at the right time. And a word that is spoken in due season means when your word is spoken at the right time, it is fitly spoken. It fits the moment. Have you ever said something you knew you shouldn't have said? Can't get it back. <laughs> you can't get it back. Your answers, how you respond to people. Look at the people. Look, look at the people in terms of, I just talked about cyberbullying and what's happening in um, this, uh, social media and all like that. Some people are so gullible. People call you in the house. They tell you that they have, you want something, and you give them your social security number. They say, well, we'll give you, give me your rallying number, and they send it to you, bank. They can give me the bank number, and bank bank, and all And you were phone because they said, you know, he said, you want $35,000. And before you know it, if you got 35 in the bank, it's all gone. Watch how you answer. It means a lot having God answer me. How you doing? I'm doing all right. Over against, I'm well. How do you answer me? You can turn people on and you can bring people to you. Now, why is this important? Is this a part of Christianity? No, it's a part of living. It's a part of life and how you can be ingratiating and how you can draw people to you and not run people from you. 
Young people, listen to your pastor. Be cautious in this life about what you say. Think before you answer. That's the diet, Lord.